Support for Exploring the American Spirit is provided by Sassy Shears, Riverside Salon, Spa, and Boutique, where clients can spend an hour or an entire day. Hair, nails, skin care, and massage for adults and children. More online at sassyshears.com. I'm Mary Parks. American spirit. Say those words and many images come to mind. You may think of heroic acts in times of tragedy, a person or an entire family that overcomes adversity. In reality, selfless acts by ordinary individuals that help others take place every day in every part of our country. They aren't likely to make the headlines, but their impact is just as real, and the effect on our communities is just as powerful. At Exploring the American Spirit, we're going to take a look at some of the phenomenal accomplishments done by people who saw a need and found a way to meet it. I'll be your guide on this incredible journey, so pull up your chair and relax as we explore the American spirit. I have it. We well, have it. I'm going back the other way. I just saw it. Here we it's a busy Saturday morning inside this Palm Desert studio. Stacy Jacob, Olga Morales, and Debbie Green are hard at work preparing pages for their next book. It will be a unique picture book, their 54th, featuring what they call Turning Head Supermodels. So this gal did flags for... Um, like prayer flags for Prayer worship. flags for, for worship, worship. She was through up. her church. So we... Ha was that Ada? No, this is... Um, for is that Veronica? No, I just said her name. Diana, Diana Rosas. Diana. Yeah. Okay. So yes. why don't I have Beautiful. her on? She's here? local. The trio of girlfriends know each of the models by name, wardrobe, and props. Before they had a studio, they did glamour shots in their homes using fabric and cheap lights. And we well, we, we yeah, weighed we fabric yes. and we hold up fabric. Yes. Yes. Fabric. And we and we blow glitter. 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 And bubbles. Didn't we do bubbles yes, one time? we did bubbles. Bubbles. Out yeah. of a bubble machine. A machine. At my right. house. Yeah, we're right. to wear a bubble machine. I don't know where it went. <laughs> but when you're a one-man band, you do we all do of it. You do everything. And it's together. so much fun. The Turning Heads team photographs women and men who are going through chemotherapy and have lost their hair. It's an effort that's been called inspirational and empowering, both indicative of the American spirit. Me in the water, and that's the photo that became a book that Stacy created for me with quotes and pictures of me bald, and that's the experience we wanted to give to other women, and that was the start of Turning Heads. Debbie and Stacy know all too well what surviving and thriving are about. Green is a two-time cancer survivor, having also lost her leg at the knee. Five years ago, I was diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and went through six rounds of chemotherapy. During that time, I lost all my hair, and my girlfriend Stacy called me one day and said, why don't we do something fun? Bring a bunch of clothes, get your makeup done, and I want to do pictures of you. I have a camera and lights, and I don't know what I'm doing with any of it because it's going to be a hobby for me. So I showed up the next morning with a bunch of clothes and all this makeup on my bald face, and there's Stacy in the garage crying. I said, Stacy, what's wrong? She said, I don't know why I said I do this. Just because I have the camera equipment, I don't know what I'm doing. And we did three hours of photos and changing clothes and putting on great jewelry. And look what it's evolved into. Yeah, it's turned into turning heads because that three hours we spent together it wasn't just about the finished product. It wasn't about the photos. It was about spending a day forgetting about cancer and just having a good time and not thinking about 
your problems and your sickness and all the things you're going through and just bonding with a girlfriend. And that was the experience we wanted to give to other people. Turning Heads provides free professional photo shoots, including makeup and styling, a coffee table photo book, printed pictures, and a video slideshow. Supermodels never pay for a thing. And there's Rhonda with her hats. Leslie had come to us. Oh, she looked beautiful in pink. She loved pink. She was in hospice when she came to us and wanted photos for her family. And we just had the most joyous day. Her mom came, her aunt came, and Leslie passed away 10 days later. But she, this is what she wanted in her final days. And her photos were used at the funeral. Our Turning Heads photos were shown at the funeral 10 days, uh, 10 days later. Yeah. Um, Stacy. Jody. Jody loved to box. So I went to Big Five and got a boxing bag and we hung it from something out of the shot. I think she, we held it actually. Did we hold it? And <laughs> no, we, we held it. And she put on her boxing gloves and we put her in a cocktail dress and boxing gloves, which I thought was just fabulous. She loved that. We always like to include the family when we can. And Mary was an actress oh, and we yeah. made it look kind of like she's sitting on a stage and that she's in between her takes and and Willie was too ill to come to the studio, so we actually went to her house. She had brain cancer. You can kind of still see the scar. And we dressed her up at her house. Her husband cleaned off the golf cart, and we got a photo of her in her golf cart with her golf clubs because she was bound and determined to get back to her golf game. Turning Heads is all about positively impacting people in perhaps their darkest hour. This one, she had these fabulous tattoos and she wanted to show them and so we, uh, we made it happen for her. She looks just, just beautiful there. And this, oh, she was great. She was a Miss Arizona, drove down here to, uh, to have a shoot done, never, never, been bald, never done anything bald. She always had her wig on. And uh, she actually did the event, uh, the uh, Miss Arizona pageant, bald, walked down the runway bald. So these are, these are just beautiful women, courageous women with beautiful stories. And we always try to incorporate their favorite colors, their favorite themes, things that they really enjoy, that they're thrilled about. and. Uh, these are beautiful ladies. When the women come in, I'm, I always call them in advance and we have a little conversation and most of them know that I went through this. And I try to encourage them to be themselves, be natural. You know, we're warriors. If you're brave enough to go out in the world without your hair on, without any mask of any kind, all you have to do is smile at somebody. Everyone smiles back. Everyone wants to help you. Um, and the hair isn't what makes you who you are. And that's what we were trying to get across to people with Turning Heads. Helping one another during times of struggle, changing lives, and the perception about how they look, all traits of the American spirit. We've done several men, and Steve was one of our models who never wanted to go out of the house. He tried it once. He went with his parents to a buffet at a casino and he thought the whole world was staring at him. And men without hair, that's kind of a common thing these days. You know, bald is in for men. But he was so self-conscious because it wasn't how he viewed himself. 
and I think the Turning Heads experience helped him too. Some say the ladies have given their heart and soul to the project. It's what we often see in people who exude a true American spirit. I want viewers to understand that when you have cancer and you're battling a disease, that how you look to the public is basically how you feel inside. And if you look good, you feel good, you feel better. If you smile at the world, everyone wants to smile back. And if you're brave enough to go out there and face the world, you shouldn't have to worry about your hair. It's the last thing you need to worry about. But we're women, we always worry about our hair. And our makeup. Yeah, and, and so big earrings, good makeup, and a bald head, look at how gorgeous it is. It's, it, and there, every one of our models has been beautiful, inside and out. The Turning Heads Project is truly a labor of love. There is no paid staff. It's a nonprofit organization that exists entirely on donations. This is all volunteer. We don't charge them. We give all of the women a book of their experience, of all their photos. Who um, the book? We do. Um, we get donations from friends and family. Uh, we are all volunteers. We all have full-time jobs. We do this. We get as much out of this as the people that we gift this to. And it's, it's the book, it's the photos, but it's the experience. And a stranger walks in the door and she walks out three, year, three hours later, our friend. The same holds true for men. Turning heads made a lifelong friend in Steve. So Steve was bald from chemotherapy and did not want to go out of the house. Not even his parents had seen him bald because he was so self-conscious. After the shoot, he actually started going out without a baseball cap. He was a Lakers fan, is a Lakers fan, and he came with his partner. And look how great he looks. I mean, he's fabulous looking. He's Good really hot. Good looking guy. No supermodel could be photographed without makeup. Olga Morales is a professional makeup artist from Washington, D.C. She's touched the faces of politicians, presidents, celebrities, and now cancer patients, helping them to look their best in front of the camera. That is a challenge. That is a very big challenge. I have done a lot of... Uh, if I can drop this name, I worked a lot with Christopher Reeve after his accident. And he had was losing his hair and he had lots of blotches and 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 I remember it being such a difficult it you know, I was a little nervous at first, but this experience I, I draw on on the experience that I had with Christopher and how, how how wonderful he was to work with. And when I come here to work with these women, they come in they're so, um, they're, some of them are really out there, some of them are really shy. And, you know, I'm, I'm very close. Makeup is a very personal, personal, you're in someone's space. You're not out here. You have to cross that space and get them to feel comfortable with you touching them and making them feel comfortable and relaxed. And they have no hair and they're concerned. They have no eyebrows, they have no lashes. Um, and my job is to give them and put all of that back for them that they didn't have. Uh, it's a challenge. I welcome it. I love doing it because the before and after pick, it's just, I, I, get, I get goosebumps. They walk in and then when Stacy and Debbie look at them, they just, you know, it's, it's like a transformation. And they too feel that 
transformation. The uh, they said, oh my God, I have eyebrows. Oh my God, I have I have lashes. And there's a, there's a way to, to create that you have lashes without putting on false eyelashes. I usually do not do false eyelashes. A lot of them do not like it. It doesn't feel comfortable. They they then start you know blinking. It's not something they they do every day. So. Uh, I want them to feel just as comfortable and at ease so that Stacy's job becomes so much easier. Uh, so there's a way to do that. That requires special tools, if you will, thousands of dollars worth of high quality makeup brushes. These are my everything. I can't do anything without my brushes. And I've got my powders, my concealers, my brow pencils, but my really special, special thing is my airbrush. And I started airbrushing a long time ago in uh, Washington, D.C., and way before it was popular for high-definition television. And they've never had it done before, and so I explained to them what it's going to feel like, and I mix, mix the foundations and put it in a little pot, and then I start airbrushing their face, and they get very relaxed and very excited. So after that, uh, I powder, I do a little contouring if they need, chin and cheeks. But mainly it's just putting that face back because they have no eyebrows and it's just giving them all those pieces that put their face back together. At the end of the session is a Cinderella reveal, a glimpse in a silver mirror. Just being in the White House and working, working and doing makeup on a president and then coming here and doing what I do with turning heads, it, you, it, this, this is just, I don't have words for it. But it's words that speak volumes about what these women are doing for cancer patients. Words like empower and blessed. We ask them to pick one word that means something to them about their experience that day. And we've heard everything from, you got this, someone used three words, blessed, spectacular, precious, amazing, loved, beautiful. And they all describe in one word um, how they felt that day from the experience. Stacy Jacob is the photographer who co-founded Turning Heads. She says the legacy left behind includes, of all things, glitter. We've done maybe three photo shoots and we had no idea the impact of what we were doing. We had no idea how important it was until I got a phone call from this local woman named Heather and she said that she had stopped doing chemotherapy and she knew she only had maybe a couple months, a few months to live and what she wanted to do was a Turning Heads photo shoot and she wanted to have photos with it for her family and she just wanted to have fun and I was graceful on the phone, I think, and talked to her and interviewed her like I do everyone, tell me what you want, and we went through it, but I got off the phone and I was in a panic. And I called Debbie and I said, this is so much bigger than us. You know, this really is going to be something that someone is gonna treasure forever. And we were just having fun with it, you know, and, and didn't realize the impact. I'd always ask people to come up with three words that were important to them that could kind of be my guideline for designing a photo shoot that was around them. And she said, I want to show peace, joy, and gratitude. And I just thought that was so amazing that this is, you know, that she had so much joy in her in spite of what was going on that she wanted to share. And she said, like, have you ever heard that song by Pink called Glitter in the Air? 
and she said it's a song about really seize the day, seize the moment, and you know, have you ever thrown glitter in the air? And so I went out the night before her photo shoot and I bought glitter and brought it along to the shoot and Debbie brought glitter along to the photo shoot and Heather brought glitter along. That afternoon, in the midst of a glitter storm, emerged the beautiful face of a woman facing cancer head on with courage and dignity and grace. And there was one perfect photo and the amazing photo that came out, she was wearing, Heather was wearing a teal top because of ovarian cancer. She had ovarian cancer and that's why she wanted to wear it for awareness. And one tiny teal star just landed front and center in perfect focus in the middle of the frame. There was every other color of glitter there and that one teal star showed up like a little gift. And that's just been one of my favorite photos and really one of the ones we use most for turning heads over the years. That beautiful model now smiles from the walls of Jacob's studio, a reminder of what strength and courage look like. He said she never saw it until that day and she finally saw her own beauty. And, you know, to give that, to help someone change the perception of not just when they're bald, but of them overall you know, and how they feel about themselves and how they see beauty. And for me, turning heads is really twofold. It's also about letting the world know about someone, and, and Debbie has a great story about this, um, but it's about letting someone know if you see someone wearing a baseball cap, you know, that's bald from chemotherapy, or that has a wig on that they're, you know, itching because it's hot and uncomfortable and they're in a restaurant, you know, sometimes when we're uncomfortable, we'll turn away and we'll just say, well, I wanna give that person their privacy. But what happens is that person now is not only going through cancer, but they become invisible, almost ostracized because of society's discomfort with what do I say? Do I say the right thing? Say what you would have said anyway. You know, if they're standing next to the gum, tell them this one's my favorite. If they're standing, you know, if they're in a shop, say, oh, that would be a great color on you. Just don't let them disappear. Turning Heads provides access to an online community through their website for anyone who has lost his or her hair while battling cancer. They've also stocked a dressing room with just about everything. And we have a plethora to choose yes. from of items, shoes, clothing, accessories, yeah. evening gowns, shawls, crinolines, everything. Yes, this is, and this is our room of props. We've got jewelry, all kinds of jewelry here. We've got, in, in this closet here, we've got a lot of clothes as well, all kinds of props. We've used this. I've uh, got some other things in here that we use. Um, baskets, uh, flowers, just everything. Rugs. The website was how Christina Anderson learned of the Turning Heads project. At 25, she was the youngest Turning Heads supermodel, Anderson was diagnosed with a rare form of ovarian cancer right about the time she planned to compete in the Miss Arizona USA contest. Following her session with Olga, Debbie, and Stacy, Christina showed true beauty, strength, and baldness as she walked the runway in a bathing suit and evening gown. If Jacob, Green, and Morales had their way, Turning Head Studios would be operating across the United States, helping cancer patients everywhere celebrate their baldness and ability to embrace life while facing their obstacles head on. When I was diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, right before I was starting chemotherapy, I walked in a store and I saw a woman with a baseball cap and she was obviously bald underneath it. And I turned away because I didn't know what to say to her. And I knew in a few short weeks that would be me. And people would turn away from me because they wouldn't know what to say. And the last thing I ever want is for people not to see me. And I realize now I should have gone up to her and said, hey, those are great earrings you've got on, or what a pretty color on you, or anything, or just smile, so that she wouldn't be invisible. And that's really what Turning Heads is all about. We don't want you, if you're brave enough to go out in the world while you're fighting cancer, we don't want people to not see you. And when I knew that would happen to me, I didn't know quite how to handle it. And then Stacy took my pictures, made that book for me, and I saw, oh my God, this is fabulous. I am brave, I am a warrior, and that's the experience we wanted to give to everyone else. That means something to them about their experience that day. 
and we, and we have and we have <laughs> i love you girls i love you Mwah. 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 lipstick <laughs>